the object is like a bunch of like paintings of buildings. They look like they could be from India or Pakistan. It's got a gold surround, so it was obviously quite an expensive item. At the bottom it said um, monuments of Lucknow and Kanpur. What you have there are ten rather small pictures painted on ivory of some important monuments or monuments that visitors tended to be taken to see in two North Indian cities, one Lucknow and the other Kanpur. This is a particular technique of painting on ivory which Indians practiced in the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries and they turned it to, to do things for foreign visitors. That um, is someone who's like very wealthy and must have lived in that place. The people who were there, it must have been quite special to them. It must have meant something to them because you wouldn't go there and frame it in, in, in such, a, such a nice frame if it didn't mean anything to you. These two particular cities played a big role in the confrontation or conflict between the British rulers of India and Indian opponents to that rule in 1857 and 1858. The central miniature shows a seraph or angel guarding or watching over a well. It's like a big white statue, almost looks like it's got like a big cloak on. It, it looks like it's like got its arms almost crossed and it has like a big golden cross above it. British tourists were fascinated by what they called the Indian Mutiny or the conflict of 1857 where the Indians rose up against British rule and the bodies of many British women and children were put down that well and so the seraph is supposed to be guarding the well and remembering and overseeing the souls of the people who were lost during that conflict. But there were also really cruel and nasty reprisals by the British. Indian soldiers were, for example, put inside cannons and fired, blown into pieces by the British as a form of ritual execution to punish them for rebelling against British rule. The conflict that broke out in the late 1850s was the product of Indian reactions, reactions by different groups of Indians to problems thrown up by being ruled by the British. And some of that was about interference in land ownership or on the handing on of princely rule from one generation to another. Some of it was about perceived threat to the religious traditions and practices of Indians by outsiders who were neither Hindu nor Muslim. Some of it was more local level grievances as well. By the 20th century, Indian nationalists were describing the conflict of 1857-8 as the first Indian War of Independence. I'm wondering who, who painted that in such detail and how, how it's possible to have that much skill. What brush they used, because it must have been a really thin brush because there's so much detail into every building in such a, more, such a small place. These ten little pictures, maybe especially the one of the angel, are a way to help us to think about the British presence in India, to think about how Indians could respond creatively to that presence by earning a living by producing those little paintings, and how it also enabled the British to think about the bits of India they ruled and what they had had to do in order to rule it. <laughs>